Lemurs are primates, just like you, me and any other monkey or ape you might happen to meet. But monkeys and apes are a lot more closely related to us than lemurs are, because lemurs represent a very special and very separate branch on the primate evolution tree. Lemurs only occur on the islands of Madagascar, and we are going there too to meet the strangest and the stripiest and the leggiest and the cutest lemurs we could find, and to learn a little bit more about what it's like to be a lemur. Lemurs are a very ancient group of primates and first appeared some 35 million years ago in Africa. This was several million years before monkeys appeared on the scene. So, for a while, the ancestral lemurs had the continent pretty much to themselves. But when monkeys did arrive, they were faster, smarter, more aggressive and more agile, and the African lemur line went extinct. But, luckily for us, since we're filming lemurs, a small group made it across the sea to Madagascar on a raft of vegetation. They did this some 60 million years ago, when the currents were more raft-friendly than they are now. And from these brave rafting pioneers, we have all the diversity of lemurdom that we can enjoy today. There are a lot of lemurs. No one's quite sure how many because scientists are still finding new ones. There's been, for example, about a dozen of these in the last five years. But we know of around a hundred different types of living lemur. And they do lots of different ecological jobs. And the range from a tiny, secretive and nocturnal mouse lemur, who is three and a half inches long and weighs about one ounce, to the biggest of living lemurs, the Indri, who are bold, loud, day-living and weigh some 20 pounds. <coughs> lemurs' diets are varied too. So, while this little guy here likes insects, the safarka likes leaves. And this rough lemur thinks that fruit is just wonderful. And this brown lemur would clearly like to like it, if only it could um, figure out the packaging. As for this ring-tailed lemur, well, they'll try to eat just about anything. Lemurs do things a little differently from other primates. For one thing, they have a rather dog-like muzzle, and so, like dogs, they rely a lot more on their sense of smell and a lot less on vision than do, say, monkeys or us. Then there is the fur. Madagascar is a mountainous place, and many of the lemurs live quite high up, so it often gets surprisingly cold at night. So, unlike most monkeys, lemurs have a dense, thick, woolly covering. The hands, too, are different. The way the bones are arranged inside mean that they are great for gripping trees, but just can't do all that fine grip-like stuff that apes and monkeys can. Which not only sometimes makes food handling a bit bothersome, but means that grooming is often most easily done by tongue and tooth. Mind you, if you are a lemur, you've also got a jaw full of pointy teeth. So, if you are going to groom someone else, it's probably best to start with a kiss, just to show you mean no harm. Lemurs have a number of ways of getting about. Some, like these ringtails, are nearly totally terrestrial, spending nearly all of their time padding around on the ground. Others, like this brown lemur, scramble about between the trees and the ground. And even a tree-living species like the rough lemur doesn't mind coming to the ground if the food looks yummy enough. Or if there's a really great mineral lick. Though hanging around in the trees is clearly preferred. And then there are the real specialists, those for whom home is a nice firm tree. With hind feet super suited for grasping trunks or providing a nice broad launch pad for some turbocharged bouncing, the Sifarka is a leaping machine par excellence. To do things this well, you need long, powerful legs for the force. And a good tail for the balance. And it looks like being balletically beautiful as well is a really good idea.
With a strong dry season every year, and sometimes even two of them, Madagascar's forests are rather more open than those in Asia or the Amazon, so leaping makes sense. Indeed, there are proportionately more lemurs who leap than any other kind of primate. There used to be other kinds too. 2,000 years ago, there was a 200-pound lemur called Archaeoindris, which did gorilla-like things, while another, called Paleopropithecus, moved around like a sloth hanging from Madagascar's trees. Sadly, these and at least 50 other kinds of lemur have gone extinct since humans first arrived on the island 2,000 years ago. Unfortunately, for a group of primates largely obsessed with trees, Madagascar has one of the highest rates of forest loss of any tropical country. While some species seem to be adapting to life with humans, it's not all roses, and many species of lemur seem to be on the verge of disappearing. If the 60 million years of lemur evolution were a day, then their contact with humans has lasted just two terrible seconds. Conservationists are fighting hard, but it remains to be seen how many of these lovely animals will survive to leap and groom and bask into just one more generation. Baobabs must surely be among the oddest looking of any trees on the planet. Up to 100 feet tall, and often some 30 feet around at their broadest point, they appear like some strange upturned vegetable bottle, onto which someone has fixed some disproportionately small branches. With species scattered across the world, they have a distribution that has puzzled biologists for decades. They have a huge diversity of pollinators and types of flowers, and they seem to have so much trunk for so very few leaves. And they are often the only trees in an otherwise shrubby and arid landscape. Many baobab fruit are big and fuzzy and have seeds with a thick pasty covering that, in the African species, is used to make cream of tartar. In nature, the seeds are dispersed when the fruits fall to the ground and then various mammals, including lemurs and mice, will come to feast on them. In the dry shrublands of Madagascar, rain is an intermittent luxury and there's no telling when or how much might arrive. To overcome this, and to try to make sure they have a regular supply of the precious stuff, baobabs have developed a water storage system in their trunks that allows them to store over 30,000 gallons of water which means that 20 of them would have enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The water is enough to keep them ticking over through those years of the hardest drought, even when everything else has crisped and browned away. But the trunk doesn't just serve the plant's interests. It's pretty important for wildlife too. The trunk is thick, but it is also spongy and often has hollows, which various animals use as a home. Lizards, tree frogs, birds and lemurs all stake their place in the big, bulgy, hollow high-rise as do other animals you might not really want as neighbours, like scorpions, snakes and spiders. Like many other types of animal and plant in Madagascar, baobabs are something of a speciality of this island. Sure, there is a species in Australia and another species that occurs throughout the whole of East Africa, but there are six more species of baobab that live just in Madagascar itself. Sadly, the adaptations that have allowed baobabs to survive millennia of drought are no match for a species that arrived very recently on the shores of Madagascar. They have only been on Madagascar for some 2,000 years, but their presence has coincided with massive deforestation and the widespread extinction of native animals and plants. So, the question for Madagascar's baobabs is not whether they are sufficiently drought resistant, but are they adequately human proof to survive another 15 million years? There are over 60,000 animal species with backbones, while half of those are fishes. 10%, 6,000, are lizards. Lizards come in a great variety of shapes and sizes, but in all the nearly 30 families of lizards, chameleons must be the oddest and the least lizard-like to look at. The chameleon is a marvelous thing, full of adaptations to a life being specialized as a predator in trees, bushes, or anywhere 
where the way forward is to be gained by gripping something round. And that makes them very special. For example, while most lizards have five finger-like digits, often with long claws and a hook-like grasp, chameleons have taken a radically different path. They have two mitten-like graspers where the fingers and toes have fused together. But where species have gone back to the ground, like this Brookesia, they have still kept their tree-climbing mittens. But that's not all. Chameleons are some of the very few lizards to have a prehensile tail. Some may not be fully prehensile and able to support the entire weight of a dangling chameleon, but they are still very useful safety lines in a complex three-dimensional world, the kind which the chameleons inhabit. Or, in the Brookesia of course, it's a case of no tree, no prehensility, and the tail barely coils. Chameleons are reptiles, and so have a coating of scales. But the scales are not the overlapping roof tile-like things that cover the bodies of so many lizards and snakes. Chameleons are closely related to the agama lizards and to iguanas, and there, like them, they have round, tiny, button-like scales that lie beside each other rather than overlap. This not only allows an extremely flexible body, but reduces the number of places that parasites, like ticks, can hide. But if the basic form of the scale is the same as the iguanas, what chameleons do with them is not. While many lizards can do a bit of colour changing to match their background or to show their mood, chameleons have taken this to a whole new level. While they can't mimic everything, no chameleon for example could ever disappear on a piece of plate or on the page of a book, the variety of form and colour and the speed of their colour change is impressive, even to us. And of course, it's not to us that the message is broadcast, but to predators and other chameleons. And they do it with little sacks of pigment that are kept in cells just beneath the scales. These expand and contract in response to hormones or to direct and speedy stimulation by the nerve endings. This means that colour patterns can be altered or amplified both swiftly and with pinpoint precision. To intimidate a rival, to charm the opposite sex, or to try and not look like a chameleon at all and so avoid the attentions of a predator. Another way of avoiding being eaten is to move slowly, and chameleons have taken this to an extreme. While most lizards scuttle, all chameleons move with apparent lassitude and caution. But they are not lazy lizards, instead it's a very cunning strategy, for such slowness not only serves to avoid being eaten, but it also allows the chameleons to eat, because if potential predators don't see them as prey, potential prey likewise doesn't see them as predators. To help them both hunt and hide at the same time, chameleons use two of the most remarkable bits of biology in the armory of any predator anywhere. Independently rotating eyes and a long, extrudable tongue. This are a unique chameleon invention, and almost there are small fish called sand lances that occur on Australia's Great Barrier Reef, and their eyes do very similar things, but that's it. Apart from this one small family of some 30 species of fish, no other animal have come up with anything like it. Anyway, back to chameleons. What looks like a turret is actually made from the animal's two eyelids fused together. Each eye is turned and rotated by a complex series of muscles, which, if you could see them, look like the spokes of a wheel with the eye at its hub. Because their eyes stick out so far and can rotate so much, chameleons can see nearly half a sphere on each side of its head. Better still, one eye can focus on food, while the other can search for predators. Somehow, the brain processes two totally separate, ever-changing images of the world. And very good they are too at it. A chameleon can spot a small insect over 20 feet away. And of course, it can also spot a predator over 20 feet away. Moving slowly once presented chameleons with a problem. While slow motion is great for avoiding being seen by predators, it's not so good for ambushing prey. Unless, of course, you have a secret projectile weapon. And chameleons have just that. A weapon that can be twice the length of their body, leave it blurringly fast and travel with pinpoint accuracy, often reaching their prey in less than one-tenth of a second. And then bring it back. It is, of course, the chameleon's extrudable, extraordinary tongue. 
The tongue travels at 18 feet per second. It accelerates so fast that the tip experiences an acceleration of some 40 Gs. About three times what a fighter pilot feels in a steep turn. Muscles alone can't produce this kind of speed. And so the chameleon has curved the throat's hyoid bone. And that, with a cunning arrangement of rubbery collagen, launches the tongue tip cravers in a way that's a lot like an arrow from a bow. Except, of course, that the chameleon's arrow always comes back. Nowadays, you can find chameleons in Africa, India, or Southern Europe. Any that you find in Florida, California, or Hawaii are all descendants from escaped pets. But chameleons once roamed much more widely. Indeed, the oldest fossil chameleons come from around 60 million years ago in China. The chameleons have probably been slowly going about their business for at least 100 million years. They are an ancient group, and once they perfected the art of being themselves, they changed very little. Fossil chameleons from Europe, 13 million years old, are almost indistinguishable from some of the modern chameleons. Today, there are around 160 chameleon species, and fully half of those occur on Madagascar. As we've just seen, it's not the chameleons evolved here, it's just that they are a very old evolutionary line that was already in place when young Madagascar said goodbye to its parent continent of Africa and went East Young Landmass. Some of the lizards that evolved or moved into Africa never made it onto Madagascar. This left the chameleons free to take on the wide variety of ecological roles that got left vacant. As a result, Madagascar's chameleons include the world's largest and the smallest chameleons. And in between, there are some of the strangest and most beautiful lizards to be found anywhere in the world. These extraordinary ruffs and horns, for example, like the antlers on a deer, are used by males to threaten rivals and impress the females. Just another example of the amazing wildlife that occurs on marvellous, mysterious and chameleon-packed Madagascar. <laughs>